The last two of the B-Series missiles were launched from pads 14 and 11. The first to go was missile 13B on 15th of January. B was the first Atlas designed to go the full 5,500 nautical mile range with an estimated re-entry vehicle. The missile was similar to 12B, which attained this distance in November 1958. Prior to launch, landline measurements showed all systems correctly operating. Launch was good, and 13B apparently was on its way to a successful flight. At 100 seconds of flight, the missile started to oscillate and roll. This was followed by a decrease in propulsion system performance, then by complete missile instability, and eventually by a complete propulsion system failure. Because of its objective, 13B was set to minimum instrumentation, and a conclusive analysis of the failure could not be made. The final launch of the B-Series was on February 4th. This was 11B, designated to impact 3,122 nautical miles downrange. The ignition, release, and liftoff went on schedule. All missile systems operated satisfactorily during flight. All 42 primary and secondary test objectives were satisfied. No cone impact was on target. The first seven missiles of the B flight program satisfied all major objectives for the series. Extra objectives were set up for the remaining three, 10, 13, and 11B. These flights gave us many additional items of information. Missile 4C, the second Series B Atlas to be flight tested, was successfully launched from Complex 12 on January 27th. Although the Mod 3 guidance system failed, the flight control system stabilized and guided the missile during the powered portion of the flight. Separation of the re-entry vehicle did not occur as a result of the guidance system failure. The complete vehicle re-entered the atmosphere with impact indicated by the Azusa system some 43 miles beyond the planned range of 4,268 nautical miles. Re-entry was sighted from Ascension Island. The fourth Atlas launch during this period was missile 5 c 5C was launched after a double free countdown from Pad 12 on February 20. After liftoff, the flight went according to plan until booster separation at 151 seconds. At this point, the booster fuel staging disconnect or associated plumbing failed during the staging sequence. When the propellant dropped below the fuel port, fuel tank pressurization was lost. The greater pressure in the liquid oxygen tank ruptured the intermediate bulkhead. At 172 seconds, the missile exploded. The fifth missile launched this quarter was 7C on March 18. This missile was the first to carry the RVX-2 re-entry vehicle. The RVX-2 is a high-speed, ablating-type nose designed for complete recovery. Atlas 7C was launched after a countdown of two and one-half hours.
All systems function properly until 85 seconds of flight, at which time the guidance system fails. At 129 seconds, the boosters shut down prematurely. Boost of separation came at 151 seconds from a backup signal initiated by the missile programmer. The sustainer engine continued to operate for 282 seconds. Vernier, an additional 29 seconds. Considerable missile instability was evident from the time of booster shutdown to the termination of powered flight. Because of excessive missile instability, impact position could not accurately be determined. No attempts were made to recover the RVX-2 vehicle, which did not separate from the missile. In a 22-month period, beginning in June 1957, 22 Atlas missiles have been launched from Cape Canaveral. The 3D was the forerunner of a new Atlas series, requiring many measurements of components and systems untried in the flight environment. 28 first order objectives were established to evaluate design changes and characteristics of this new configuration. A 4,389 nautical mile flight was planned. The 150 minute countdown began at Complex 13 at 11 a.m. April 14th. Three holes in the countdown were required for guidance and range clearance checks. At 4.46 p.m., 3D was launched. At first missile motion, after a normal engine start, it was apparent that the liquid oxygen fill and drain valve was not closed, permitting liquid oxygen to flow around the base of the thrust section. At about the same time, leakage of fuel from the fuel fill and drain valve also occurred. This combination of fuel and liquid oxygen caused an explosion. The open liquid oxygen fill and drain valve caused low thrust in one of the two booster chambers, which resulted in a pitch down movement of the missile. This affected the motion of the launch release head which cleared the missile only partially and returned to its original hold-down position. Close examination of this high-speed film revealed that the launcher caused no damage to the missile. The flight control system demonstrated good performance in stabilizing the missile. At 26 seconds, the booster section exploded followed by complete destruction of the missile by the range safety officers. The second D flight with missile 7D was planned to demonstrate the capability of an Atlas to deliver an RVX-2 re-entry vehicle to a target 4,389 nautical miles downrange. Launch date for this event was May 18, 1959. At launch, propulsion system performance was normal. All missile systems were operating at the proper level. Launcher difficulties were evident at first missile movement. On the B-2, or right-hand side of the launcher, the following events occurred. The hold-down pin failed to retract when the bell crank retaining bolt sheared. The kick strut remained in a normal engaged position with the airborne shock absorber. The combination of a normally engaged kick strut and an abnormally engaged hold-down pin resulted in a prying force to the right booster fairing. A four-inch separation between the smooth fairing and thrust barrel occurred. Damage to the fuel tank pressurization system caused a loss of support pressure in the lower tank. The unbalanced pressures reversed the intermediate bulkhead after 62 seconds. Two seconds later, the missile exploded. Photographic data and records obtained during the flight of 7D correlated the cause of missile failure. 
The last missile flight tested this quarter was 5D on June the 6th. The flight of 5D to boost the separation went entirely according to plan. All airborne systems operated satisfactorily. Booster cutoff velocity, altitude, and time closely coincided with the planned program. After booster separation, a failure occurred in the area of the booster fuel inlet ducting at or above the staging disconnect. The resulting fuel tank leak caused a decrease in fuel tank pressure, subsequent intermediate bulkhead reversal, and finally, missile destruction at 157 seconds. A major highlight of the quarter was a successful flight test program conducted at the Atlantic Missile Range. As a result of improvements in missile reliability, major advances were made towards the goal of an operational weapons system. The first Atlas launched this quarter was 8C on July 21st. This was the third attempt to carry an RVX-2 re-entry vehicle to an impact point 4,385 nautical miles downrange. Vehicle separation occurred as planned at 282 seconds of flight. Impact was within a two mile radius of the prescribed target area. A balloon was sighted in the water approximately 69 minutes after launch, and the vehicle was recovered in excellent condition 63 minutes later. The first successful D-series flight occurred on July 28th with the launch of missile 11D from Pad 11. This was the first D missile planned to impact in the Ascension Island splash net, 4,385 nautical miles downrange. An average of all available data placed impact of the re-entry vehicle within a one-half mile radius of the target. The flight of 11D proved out modifications to correct earlier D-series flight problems. The second D-series missile to reach the Ascension Island splash net was 14D, launched at 1 p.m. on August the 11th. All systems operated as planned during the powered portion of the flight. The Mark II re-entry vehicle was bumped by the missile during retro-rocket firing. This was attributed to a deflection of the retro-rocket thrust vector due to expansion of the exhaust gases against the tank surface. Despite the bump at separation, all re-entry vehicle systems operated satisfactorily throughout the flight and impact was on target. On August 24th, Missile 11C was launched. A camera was installed along with standard instrumentation in the nose cone. At an altitude of approximately 200 miles, nose cone separation occurred, initiating camera start. At upper left, the missile body falls away. Below, in the center of the picture, is the Florida Peninsula. Cape Canaveral is covered by a triangular-shaped cloud layer. Now, 250 miles above the Atlantic, the camera is making a full circular sweep of the horizon every two minutes. The dark areas are water, the white patches, clouds. The long white strip is a storm front moving northeast across the ocean. The arc of the horizon at this point is approximately 2,000 miles across. This is a view of the Earth from a distance of 350 miles. As the re-entry vehicle approaches its apogee of approximately 700 miles, the camera photographs the northeast coast of South America at a point where the Amazon River meets the ocean. Re-entry vehicle impact was four miles long and 0.6 miles to the right of the target area. 
the data capsule was recovered intact. The camera had photographed over one million square miles of the Earth's surface. Missile 10D was assigned the special task of placing an unmanned Mercury capsule in a given flight path at a predetermined velocity and altitude. The 2,200-pound R&D space capsule built by McDonnell Aircraft for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration contained three telemetry transmitters, four data tape recorders, and two tracking beacons. 10D was launched from Complex 14 on September 9th. The flight appeared normal until booster separation. At this point, a malfunction occurred and the unit did not jettison. The booster section stayed with the main body until the capsule separated. The excess mass carried during this second stage resulted in a velocity less than the planned 23,850 feet per second. Impact was 500 miles short of the planned range of 1,809 nautical miles. The capsule was recovered eight hours after impact at a point approximately 200 nautical miles southeast of Antigua. Post-flight inspection revealed that the capsule was in excellent condition. 17D was the 31st Atlas flight tested and was launched on September the 16th. The Vernier Solo Hydraulic Power System did not activate at sustainer cutoff, and missile attitude control was subsequently lost during the Vernier Solo phase. The Mark II reentry vehicle was successfully separated with no indications of bumping the main missile body. Impact was 2.2 miles short with no cross-range error from the planned target in the Ascension Island splash net. On September 24th, at Complex 12, Missile 9C, with an Able 4 second stage, was destroyed by an explosion. Loss of fuel supply to the sustainer engine caused premature engine shutdown and failure of low-pressure liquid oxygen ducting. The resulting fire led to the missile's destruction. Work was begun immediately to rehabilitate the launch complex. Eight missiles were successfully flown this quarter. Six were of the standard D-series research and development configuration. Each Atlas was powered by a Rocketdyne MA-2 propulsion system producing 367,300 pounds of thrust. The limited phase aeronautronics decoy system was installed for initial flight testing on four missiles. A single launch tube was gimbal mounted on the B-1 equipment pod door. Inside was a canister of graphite darts and inflatable balloons of re-entry vehicle configuration. Future versions will be composed of two pods containing 14 decoys each. Ejected at the time of warhead separation, they appear on radar screens as multiple unidentified flying objects, each approaching on a different flight path. The advanced Mark III Mod 1 reentry vehicle was flight tested for the first time with missile 18D and again in the five subsequent flights. The heavy heat shield used in the earlier models has been eliminated. Erosion of the outer layer, known as ablation, prevents the nose cone from burning up during re-entry through the atmosphere. Potential range of the 2,100-pound vehicle is increased from 5,500 to 7,000 nautical miles, or 8,060 statute miles. Reliability information gained from the test program led to the elimination of flight readiness firings. 
representing a one-week time saving for each launch. Future FRFs will be conducted only for initial flight testing of DAIG, early E-series, and special missions. Launched from Complex 11 were missiles 18 and 26D, and from Complex 13, missiles 15, 22, 31, and 28D. Primary objectives were to evaluate performance of radio guidance systems, convair and acoustical propellant utilization systems, and the new Mark III Mod 1 reentry vehicle. These objectives were completely satisfied. Reentry vehicle systems performed satisfactorily in five tests. With one minor exception, each impact was on target in the Ascension Island splash net 4,385 nautical miles downrange. Missile 20D was assigned to support the Space Exploration Program directed by the Air Force and sponsored by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Its task, to boost the Able 4 vehicle into space for an attempted orbit of the moon with an instrumented space probe. Modifications to the standard D-series missile included an increase in the liquid oxygen tank skin thickness for support of the lunar space vehicle. The ABLE unit consisted of three powered stages. Payload equipment included instrumentation to obtain data on the space environment encountered by the vehicle. Facsimile television was designed to transmit lunar photographs back to Earth. The scheduled 240-minute countdown affected launch precisely as planned on 26 November 1959. Liftoff occurred at 2.26 a.m. Additional loads imposed by the upper stages did not affect the structural integrity of the Atlas airframe. Operations of all Atlas systems was completely satisfactory. However, a failure in the able stages at approximately 47 seconds prevented accomplishment of the primary mission. Portions of the first and second able stages were recovered. Impact of the Atlas tank section was in the Gulf of Guinea off the west coast of Africa as planned. The flight test program for 1959 was concluded on December the 18th with the launch of missile 40D. This was the 40th Atlas flight tested in the WS-107A1 program. Complex 13 was used for the third time in a 24-day period. 40D was equipped with a standard D-series airframe. Its prime objective was to deliver a Mark II re-entry vehicle for the first time over a 5,500 nautical mile range. The target is in a broad ocean area south and east of Ascension Island. This was the first flight missile to use the dry start procedure. No adverse effects were noted during ignition. Operation of all systems was satisfactory. At sustainer cutoff, sufficient propellants remained to deliver the payload an additional 900 nautical miles. Re-entry vehicle impact was within one half mile of the target. This 5,500 nautical mile flight was the 15th consecutive successful flight of an Atlas missile. Each flight test represents a significant advance in the development of the Atlas weapon system. The 23 ICBMs launched from Cape Canaveral in 1959 far exceeded the total missiles launched prior to that date. 